Here's Venus flytrap. Guys, stop running Venus flytrap. This is so bad. Guys, this is a three cost two, two. This is not good for heal decks. Plus, if this was a three cost two, two, and it would heal you for two when played, it would still, by the way, that would be a bad card. That would still be way better. Venus flytrap plant just dies. Usually when you play it to a bungee plumber rolling stone, it's not even necessarily gonna get that heal going. I just compare this to like ketchup mechanics. <laughs> So bad. This is guys. Stop. Even the budget players, budget heal decks, do not. You know what? I'm putting this in freaking please delete tier. Save our souls from this card. This is so. No one should ever run a three cost two two that sometimes heals in a deck. What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today we're doing yet another tier list today due to popular demands uh, from everyone on YouTube. Okay, not everyone. <laughs> we're doing the solar class. I will do the uh, class, the other classes. Again, I'm going to go through all of them. I'm also going to do a tier list for heroes, for superpowers, uh, maybe a couple other creative ideas. So if you have any new ideas of what kind of tier list you would like to see, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and if you would like to see me do, uh, just decide in the comment section below and right there which class you would like to see me do next and we are going to start off right with little buddy uh this is actually an extremely extremely useful card it does so much more than just luck so first of all it's a zero cost and i, I actually noticed someone on reddit it might have been justini um who really pointed out that little buddy could really just be like a free escape through time escape through time of course is the zo two cost zombie card that makes one of your zombies not take damage that turn. And Little Buddy, since it's a team up and it's free, you can just stick it in front of one of your plants and protect it. So your plant will be doing damage to the zombie there, but the zombie will just be uh, killing the Little Buddy. Uh, so that's the main use. Uh, it also heals you for two, which is great. Um, the team up obviously is important. The other cool synergy is the fact it's a flower. Um, so the it will work, let's say, together with a card like Briar Rose. It's just a really cool free way um to remove one of the guys with briar rose well uh, any zombie that damages this with, while briar rose on the field dies it also is a really cool combo uh actually it didn't even point this out when i was doing the kabloom class really really amazing combo if you're running chompzilla to do it together with onion rings because now you can play onion rings on five and then play if you have one or two little buddies in your hand, those what are going to be zero cost four or fours that could be played immediately with onion rings, which is besides for healing for two, besides for being team up, it's just ridiculous, ridiculous value. Um, I really think Lil Buddy is a really, really good card. I, I almost would put this in S tier. I feel like the fact that, of course, this does work with Pine Clone, but again, that's just with Solar Flare. Um, but a really nice solar flare deck is we're running for little buddies and for puff shrooms Which are all free cards and you can upgrade it with pine clone um, Another really useful part about little buddy is it's also because it's free It's a really cool way to activate your heart of choke if you have a heart of choke in a Venus flytrap planet It's a really cool combo because anytime you heal uh, it's gonna do a heal loop and damage cycle I'll explain that a little bit later um, Until your opponent blocks which is so good Read little buddy description. And thank you so much, Dasher Man, who says, read little buddy's description. What does it say? What does it say? Plus the description says, wait, you want me to go in front? <laughs> I've actually never read that before. <laughs> but yes, we want you to go in front, you freaking piece of cannon fodder, you zero cost piece of... I'm actually, because of how good this card is in any solar deck, uh, you can even use this like to protect your aggro cards if you're running like a haunted pumpkin like aggro deck uh, and it's useful with heal it's useful with uh keeping you alive it combos with bry rose combos with heart choke i'm actually putting little buddy in s tier screw it why the heck not uh it also works very well with cob cannon we'll get to that later it's a free team up in order to uh activate your cob cannon uh it's just so it's so useful and such high value all right Next up comes Bellflower. All right. Next comes... <laughs> Next comes Astro Vera. Oh, yeah. By the way, someone pointed out... Sorry, not Astro Vera. Cosmos. I always uh, mix up my mosses and my Astros and my Heart of Chokes, the names of the solar class. By the way, someone pointed me out in the comment section that I could just be scrolling through the cards like this instead of clicking out of them every single time. So I'll try to do, <laughs> remember to do that. Cosmos, this is a card, I love Cosmos. The problem is, is the lack of like good two cost environments 
in particularly with solar class like when solar winds cost two <laughs> this would have been better uh this is a one cost two two which is, again is a very good that's like standard for a sort of either aggro or tempo card but this really does will grow every single time you play an environment i guess you can combine this um in wall Knight, let's say with spike weed sector which is a very good environment possible to do a synergy tier list thank you so much uh synergy tier we might do a tribe tier list that's one of the ideas so uh yeah that's basically going to be a synergy tier list um the <laughs> cosmos it, here's the problem with cosmos there aren't a lot of environments on the plant side that cost two that you'll be able to play next time and are proactive like the best two cost environment is spike weed sector and if you play cosmos on the ground usually a good zombie is not going to put a two health zombie on the ground in front of cosmos and just get spike weed sectors too obvious of a play uh, the only really two cost like proactive environment um would be coffee grounds which in general is really not a very good environment i have done decks i think with i've tried cosmos uh and then coffee grounds with chumzilla um it, it seems like if there were actually better again just a little bit better environments on the two costs the proactive ones instead of reactive ones um like bog and etc this would actually be a much better card, but because of sort of the lackluster of the um, of, of, of the actual practical uses this has, I'm just going to kind of stick it in solid C. I don't think it's a bad card, but it's also not a good one. All right. Keep it going. Ha! Swoosh. Haunted Pumpkin! Easy S tier! Are you kidding me? Guys, this is a one cost 4-2. The weakness of course of haunted pumpkin is just bungee plumber that bungee plumber is one of the best control cards in the entire game uh, this is also pretty weak to immortitious bat power on turn one and summoning but if they do not have any of those cards this haunted pumpkin this just does so much damage and here's the good news now it has a penalty uh because of its just ridiculous ridiculous stats um when played the zombie conjures the zombie player conjures a monster and the good news is is that monsters suck they're such bad cards. let's just go and see like what 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 are the monster cards here over on the zombie side you got like ghost uh vampire is not good unless you're exactly mortician you have ways alien news is probably the one good card these yetis again are not good generally unless they have you know this is very good if you have exactly a cat lady deck but the chances that are very small this is not a good card blob again not in the right deck is not a good card con man is amazing this is basically the only con man and alien news but besides for all the rest of these monster cards are just trash especially uh in the wrong deck like yeah, i would say you know uh crow yeti again it's not a horrible card but again if if it's not in the right deck these are these cards are not going to synergize so the penalty is very very low of course the main use of uh haunted pumpkin um is for an aggro deck particularly aggro solar flare if even if you're a budget player this can easily uh get up to uh, the ultimate league with an aggro solar flare deck you can check out the aggro solar flare budget version uh on the fry map channel just type in aggro solar flare budget uh, you can also see i actually made a, an alt account like a brand new account and got to rank uh 40 in just like a few episodes uh using like a haunted pumpkin aggro deck so uh, obviously really good i would not i would say don't use this as a control card because usually if you're controlling feeding your opponent extra minions is not a good idea you could though it's a one cost pretty decent control card it also is a control card that is answerable meaning if they leave over one brain later in the game one or two brains are going to be able to remove this off the field so not the most effective but it certainly is uh the best probably the best aggro card in the entire game besides for maybe quick draw command hmm. it's probably even better anyway moving right along we are going to go right to colonel pult uh, this is not this is not a good card guys i mean the fact it's limited to the heights lane and the fact it is a 1-1, one, one. like you don't want a 1-1, one, one, you know, pinging your opponent's block meter. So it would be good if you had a guy in heights already, uh, and then it'll protect that, plus minus one. But it's just so limited to, to that one lane. If this did not have the, the, the problem of being limited to the heights lane, this would actually be a very decent card. Because it really would just be sort of the same use as Lil Buddy to protect one of your guys, plus it subtracts 1-1. One, one. This would actually be a very decent card if it wasn't limited. Uh, it just makes it too circumstantial. You're not going to really put this in a control deck, per se, uh, because it, minus 1-1 one, one is not a reliable way of controlling zombies. You know, if they play like a cheese cutter, let's say, on the ground, on turn 1, Colonel Pult just, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really stop it because they'll still draw that that card. 
Uh, I, I really don't think this is a good card, and I'm going to put it in D tier. I'm not going to say it's completely useless, but it's pretty bad. All right, here's Morning Glory. Oh, man. This card used to get a lot more use before um, Primal Sunflower is probably the reason why you don't see me running uh, Morning Glory more often. It really is a decent card. It's a 1-2-2. Two, two. It's a flower. In the late game, it will be a 1-cost 3-3, three, three, which is very good value. Something very good in this game is where you have your early game cards. Um where they're not going to be a liability to draw in the late game, and Morning Glory definitely has that. Uh, it, it, this is outclassed. It is outclassed by by Primal Sunflower, which just ends up doing more. Uh, it's very much very similar card um, in the same class, in the same cost. I, I because this is outclassed, probably in like back in base set, I probably would have given this um, a B. But because it's outclassed in this in this current meta. Uh, by Primal Sunflower, <laughs> um, I, I, I'm going to put it in C tier. I, again, it's not a horrible card, but it's also not a, not really one that is worth running in many decks. All right, keep it going. Primal Sunflower. Now, this is actually a very, very good card. This is the bread and butter of um, any uh, ramp deck. Ramp, of course, is where you're trying to gain extra sun every single turn, and you're going to be ramping up to... Um, if you're late game faster, you can be ramping up to Briar Rose. Very, very good synergy because, again, it is a cheap flower. It will help you get your Briar Rose in early. Uh, it'll help you get any of your late game cards, really. Um, th th that, the idea and the next card I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do these two sort of together. Sunflower is a much worse option. This has the advantage of being a team up, so you can stick it in front of your Briar Rose. You can protect minions. But the problem is, is that Sunflower is basically completely unplayable. Uh, on turn one and the reason is because primal sunflower if they have an answer they have a bungee plumber or a rolling stone or summoning or any of those cards primal sunflower always uh gets at least a one for one trade they're not gonna usually be able to answer this with a card uh, on turn one uh that will kill it and survive on the field unlike sunflower uh the main problems is uh Summoning, Immortitious, Bat Power, even Backup Dancers, Infinity Clones, all of those cards, so many heroes have a have a superpower that will destroy Sunflower, plus keep a minion on the field, making you just sort of lose so much tempo, especially Immortitious Bats, because also they're going to draw a card off of that. Uh, so it's just such a bad trade, as opposed to, let's say, if they Immortitious Bat into Primal Sunflower, uh, at least that Bat will die. It's still a very good play. Bat is a very under... Immortitious Bad is a very underrated superpower, but at least this kills the minion because it has to attack. The little bit of attack also gives you a little bit of extra momentum, gives extra stats on the field. Uh, it will trade, a, a, even on turn two, if they stick a minion in front of it, the Primal Sunflower will at least damage that minion for two. And for that reason, I'm going to put Primal Sunflower in A because it is legitimately a good card and it's auto-include in really any... Um, any ramp deck, you can even try to pull off aggro. I haven't usually don't run this in aggro solar flare, but you could actually run primal sunflower and pa haunted pumpkin in order to get like extra aggro cards on the field faster. I think that's a legitimate strategy. I really should try that deck. Uh, but poor old sunflower, it's not horrible, but again, it's just going in C with all the like the meh, the meh meh cards. All right, keep it going. Here's apple saucer. This is a great card. First of all, a two cost three two plant is always good uh it's so much better than two cost three two zombie because zombies they you get an opportunity to stick a little one drop in front of a three two zombie in order to remove it a plant though when you play this the zombies don't have last say the best that they're going to be able to stick in front of this is beam me up which is again a two cost for a two cost trade and beam me up is a great card uh plus in the late game this has Strike Through. It makes this just the perfect aggro card. Uh, be able to have do three damage on turn two and then three damage Strike Through when you try in the, again, the late game. With the Strike Through, this is just amazing. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to quite put this in S tier. I almost could put this in S tier. I'm going to give this like a super high A tier because there's really no solar deck that this is a bad idea in. It's just a great all around card. Absolutely amazing. It's an integral part. It's also very cheap. I mean, then budget aggro solar flare. It's just you have to have four copies of Apple Saucer. I would almost put this in S, seriously, because it's that good. I'm gonna just give it A plus. Uh, we'll reserve S for some of the some of the other cards. I mean, if I'm I might I might switch this. By the way, if you're watching this tier list on YouTube, this might end up in S tier by the time I by the time of this this video ends because Apple Saucer is seriously a great card. All right, here's Ice Boar. This is a card that looks a lot better than it is. It says 
you can destroy an entire zombie for two costs. So the amount of value if they have a dry zombie, a huge, you know, five cost or more dry zombie on the field is ridiculous. But the problem is, first of all, any player who runs drop huge dry zombies and just throws them on the field is dumb. It's not a good idea because again, there is such efficient removal like Icebore. So just because of how good Icebore and Shamrocket are, <laughs> it basically makes playing again it's another card and playing huge zombies on the field is dumb maybe if shamrocket costs five then ice borer should cost like three or four uh and then that would actually make garg decks more viable i ranted about that at great length uh in the shamrocket rant uh and in the guardian tier list video uh, where are we going to put Iceborne? Now, th the good news is it destroys a zombie for two. The bad news is, is that it's very circumstantial. First of all, you're going to need a fusion card. So you're going to need to play two plus something else, which again, in the late game on turns five, six, it's not even that hard. Um, the main weakness of Iceborne is compared to, let's say, Shamrocket or Squash, which also remove big zombies, is the fact that if you have a plant in the field and you want to protect that plant, Ice Spore is unable to do that. Removing a card with Shamrock, it will remove the zombie off the field, but Ice Spore, you have to have an empty a zombie in an empty lane. And that's actually the biggest liability of Ice Spore and why it's really not worth running in a lot of decks as removal. Again, this is a cheap card though, and it is a very effective, it makes very good trades. Uh, again, this is not a bad card. This is really not a bad card. I'm going to put this in B. I think it is a little bit better than the C's that we're running. Again, it's just not the top tier level of the game. I'll just give it a B, maybe B to low B. Uh, that'll be fine. All right. Keep it going. <laughs> Still not sliding between the thing. <laughs> Who cares? Fume Shroom. Ah, it just doesn't do enough. This only does two damage for a two drop. Yeah, it has strike through, but strike. if this had bullseye, that nah, still wouldn't be good. That would be like a Galactic Cactus light. Extremely light. The Strike Through does not make it worth it. Uh, it seems like maybe Strike Through would be good if you can buff your cards. But again, what are you going to use to really buff B Fume Shroom? Where are you going to use? Chrome Magnolia? You're going to use Berry Angry? It's just not worth it. This is not a good card. Even in the most budget version of Agro Solar Flare, there's always going to be better cards like Apple Saucer and Wild Berry. And there's always going to be better two drops <laughs> to run than Fume Shroom. I really don't see this even in a, in a mushroom deck. I, I don't know even what deck this is. You know what? I'm putting this in F tier. Screw it. I, I, I really, really think this is a very bad, especially because it only has one health. Even if this was a 2 2, it still wouldn't be a good card. <laughs> it really wouldn't. I think if this was a 2 3, maybe it would just become in the realm. 3 2 would obviously be way too overpowered. Um, but maybe a 3 1. I think a 3-1 strike through. I wonder if that would be worth it. It's so easy to remove. So it'd be a glass cannon. I, I could see this working at three health. But anyway, a three, a three attack, I mean. That would actually be a very good aggro card at three. Hmm. Anyway. 3-1. I I I I I'd like to see that. But anyway, uh, it's it's just not worth it at, at ever. It's really bad. Horrible, horrible card. What are you gonna use? Buff Shroom? Buff Shroom's not a good card, guys. <laughs> Here's Pepper MD. This is a really solid card. Uh, this can you can get so much value uh, whenever you're healing. I forgot to say about Little Buddy is that it also works with Pepper MD just to growing uh, a lot. Uh, this is sort of a staple for at least every budget heal deck. It happens to be, and I'm gonna lower this rank a little bit because it happens to be on the highest level of the game. Um, in a lot of the heal decks, you don't even run Pepper MD. You're really gonna rely much more on Hard to Choke, which I'm gonna explain later. So. Um, again, this is a very solid card, very good for budget players, and I will sort of factor in a little bit how great of a budget card this is. Um, it, obviously, if you play this together and then you do one of your fancy hard to show combos, which heals a bunch of times, uh, this will grow incredibly. It's a very good card to combine with Sunstrike, because uh, it'll grow very big. You're going to need some Activator, and Sunstrike will make a strike through. Um, it's not a very high maintenance card either, because in heal decks you're going to be healing very good with the uh, catch-up mechanic, which I'll get to later. Um, I'm thinking of either A or B. I feel, no, it's definitely not C. This is definitely not a C. This is way, way better than the C's. This has to be better than I Spore. I'm gonna give this, because of the budget application, I'm gonna give this an A. I would say on the highest level of the game, this would probably be more in B, but because, again, this is so solid, uh, and it's so cheap, it's an uncommon, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give this an A. Uh, probably like A, uh, for budget players, A, and for non-budget players, I'll give it a B. All right, let's keep it go. Should I put it just in B? 
and say for budget it's a all right we'll stick it in b screw it keep it going sage sage this is not this card should not have the condition of if you made at least six sun this turn why can't this should be a two cost two one draw a card when played it's, it will be a bad tempo card it does two damage you can remove something off the field at least you draw i wish the plants had more ways of cycling through their deck uh, it's one thing that the efficient card draw is really, really lacking. Um, really in the game in general now that they nerfed all the zombies that do that too. But uh, especially on the plant side, it, it, just to wait, having a 2 cost 2 1 in your deck and it only being useful in the lake. When you have 6 sun, you're going to be wanting to spend your 6 sun on a much stronger plant, not Sage Sage. This is really a piece of trash garbage. I'm playing right in F tier. Screw it. All right, here's, <laughs> here's Sunshroom. Uh, Sunshroom is the exact same cost. As uh, Twin Sunflower, I guess, is the next card, so I can do Scrolly Scrollies. Uh, this Twin Sunflower gives you two, plus it's a, plus it is, <laughs> it gives you two immediately, plus it's a flower, which makes it synergize with cards like Briar Rose. Uh, Sun Shroom only gives you one, and then it turns into a Sunnier Shroom, which will then gain one health and give you two. Uh, and this is completely, completely outclassed. Uh, by Twin Sunflower. I, again, you can use this if you have mushroom decks like I did. I think I may have ran this in the 10 and 0 No Briar Rose challenge way back in the day where you have Sun Shroom uh, and, and it combined with a cool card like uh, Gloom Shroom is, is like the one combo that Sun Shroom is better, better uh, because it's a mushroom. So you're able to activate the Gloom Shroom Mushroom Evolution. This is, again isn't even the greatest card uh, and that's a very, very specific deck with only one hero, Solar Flare. Uh, and for that reason, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the, the sunny, the sun shroom in D, uh, and twin sunflower though, which again is a decent ramp card. It, it's not great. You, you do, usually typically don't run this, um, in a lot of ramp decks just because of its, just its poor stats. Again, on turn two, this dies to every control card. You have to, basically this is only playable on turn two when the zombie plays a minion and that minion also has to not be sumo <laughs> so like there's a lot of conditions there you know if it's a hardy hero it's going to be very hard to place twin sunflower safely because again it beam me up will kill this for free and then stay a two three on the field so you lose so much tempo when this is answered plus again one cost cards rolling stone budgie plumber just answer this and then they'll have an extra brain that turn uh, to be able to do something so this is not a very useful card i'm just going to put this in c it's better better than the other one it has some uses but even in in ramp decks you're typically not running uh not running twin sunflower all right oh my gosh why does this because it's not a good guys just compare this to like extinction event on, <laughs> on, the, on the zombie side i know plant tricks are supposed to be a little better this at least does something. This is basically always removes water freaking balloons. Basically always removes one one. Like oh great, you have six or more sun. What a condition. This is so. If this was just remove two two, I think it would be an okay card. But with this condition, screw it. I'm adding a delete here. This is not. Oh my gosh. This there's no reason this card is is in the game here. There. Perfect place to put freaking water balloons. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> we made a delete here. I didn't think I would need one for the solar class. The solar class really doesn't have a whole lot of trash cards, but that that is a trash card. Keep it going. All right, Taco. You know what? I don't actually run this in heal decks anymore. I know this is a heal card. First of all, why do they make this a super rare? This would be a rare. <laughs> Stupid. All the rarity changes were dumb. Uh, this heals you for four. It draws a card, so it cycles through. Again, this is a really good activator for your heart choke, um, because it will do a four damage, really a four damage combo. So it, it's, but again, it costs three. This is so hard to pull off with the heart choke Venus flytrap planet combo, uh, which again will make a healing loop. Little buddy is just always better. I know this draws a card, so it doesn't cost you anything. But if they listen. If they make a tempo play, if you're playing this on 
turn three or four or five, and they spend all of their brains on any zombie, and your answer is Taco, you are going to be behind for the rest of the game. Just comparing this card, uh, let's say the Ketchup Mechanic, which is a very good card, this will heal you for a few, plus put a big minion on the field, typically. Or at least put something on the field. The, the pro Again, it's the Anti-Tempo. I feel like this card could be very good at two, at two cost. Maybe only heal you for three. Because then you won't be losing three sun worth of tempo. Now you are. I, I really don't think this is a very good card. Uh, sometimes it's amazing. It, I really don't even run this in heal decks. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it certainly is not good. I'm going to put it in C tier. All right. Ugh. Cosmic Sunflower is not worth it. It's a three cost two one. So again, you lose so much tempo when you play this. And you conjure a flower, which again, sometimes is good. Strike through is not very good for flowers. Because first of all, you have a lot of flowers that are strike through anyway. Plus, you end up very often just getting like, how many times do you just get Bellflower from it? You get zero attack flowers, which there are plenty. You got Little Buddy, you get like Sunflower, Twin Sunflower. So many cards that the strike through ability doesn't even help with at all. This is really not worth running in any deck. Again, you can run in like budget, some kind of budget aggro solar deck as long as you, it's a hero like Chompzilla who doesn't have anything better run on three. Really, two damage is just not worth it. I really don't like this as a card. I'm not going to say it's like completely useless because, again, it does draw you something else. I, I, I'm split between like D and F here. It probably is better than some of these cards that we're running. I mean, if you just compare it to like Fume Shroom, at least it draws you a card. Fume Shroom gives you nothing. At least this sometimes will give you. I'll just put this in like low D. I think that's pretty fair. Keep it going. Here's Jack-O-Lantern. This seems like it would be a good card. The problem is, is as a 3 cost 2-3, it dies too easily to Rolling Stone. Really any control card, decent control card in turn 3. Wrath uh, kills it. Weed Spray, Flick, obviously all kill it. If you can keep this alive or you're against a hero like Super Brains who really doesn't have any very good, like, removal for a small card like this is okay. Even Pogo. Uh, could take this out. This is a decent card though. Again, this is this isn't bad. It's not that easy. The Hardy class is very good at dealing with this. Other than the Hardy class, there really is not a lot of card wrath, I guess. There's it's not the easiest, it's not a, like a super easy card to deal with. And if you can keep this line for alive for a few turns, this will do a lot of damage. Even if it stays alive for one turn, this is still doing five damage strike through, because again, it will grow every single turn. Uh, I can stick this behind team ups. That seems like a lot to invest in a card like Jackal. It's not bad. And in aggro Chompzilla, I believe, uh, I do run because he Chompzilla doesn't have a great three drop. Um, doesn't have a lot of really good three drops. Uh, we we uh, this is a, a legitimate pick. Um, I, I, again, it's not a great card. It doesn't appear in a lot of decks. I think I'm just gonna stick it in C with everything else. The whole solar class. It, it's fine. I'll give it a high C. Solid C plus. Oh, here's a good card. Catch a mechanic. This is a this is a legitimately very good card. This counters. Um, this is a heal card. It will keep you alive, so it's control. This is also a very good tempo card. Again, even if they have two minions on the field, this is a three cost three three plant, which is great stats for a plant. Plus, it'll heal you for two. If they have three minions on the field, this is just overpowered. Um, I'm not going to put this in S tier because it's definitely not one of the best cards in the game, but it's very useful, again, in any control deck, Ketchup Mechanic, really any control deck, you can just run Ketchup Mechanic. It really counters Swarm. Uh, it's obviously very good in heal decks. It's super, super solid card. I'm, I'm not going to put it in S, but very, very solid A card. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, keep it going. All right, we got Magnifying Grass. So this actually used to cost four. You'll even see on the little icon over here. Uh, if you look on the screen, um, this used to be a four cost card. It was not useful at four. At three, this is fine. Uh, the main combo, Magnifying Grass, you're almost always going to be using this just with Chompzilla. And the reason is because Chompzilla uh, has this card, <laughs> of course, uh, that combines with Magnifying Grass, which is plant food. On turn 8, Magnifying Grass plant food, on turn 7 actually now, that does 8 damage, which is a lot. And if you can combine this with like 2 plant foods, you can actually make entire 1 turn kill Magnifying Grass decks. Again, it's really completely useless with anyone except for Chumsil because it only has the 1 health. Typically, if you're going to be playing this, you know, any on any turn, even on turn 3, but especially in the late game, and you're going to expect this to hit the opponent's face, they're going to teleport a minion in front of it, they're going to do one, so many things do 1 damage in this game. Uh, they'll typically have an answer, even if you use this together with Sunstrike, again, is a very bad combo, is, um, is Magnifying Grass Sunstrike, because that allows, still allows the zombie to do 1 damage to this and really counter 
uh, counter your big investment in, in the magnifying grass in that way. Um, so because it's only useful with Chumstill, but it is, again, a decent card. This really, especially for budget players, we want to make an OTK look up on YouTube. You can find the OTK magnifying grass deck. Some of those are relying on the old ramp, but even with the new ramp that has, ner that has nerfed the new solar winds, it's still a fine. This is just a fine card. Um, here we go. The Twitch chat is always giving their their uh, their opinions, which is totally fine. Um, let's put this. I'm gonna give this a solid B. It's just as good as Icebore. I'll give this a B. Again, it's at three cost. All right, it's better than the cards we're, <laughs> we haven't seen. It, it legitimately is good with Chumsa. All right, keep it going. Uh, here's Mixed Nuts. This card is too circumstantial. It's just not worth it. A three cost four four is great. That's great stats, but it only works again if you have a team up on the field. Um, we used to like go with Sunflower on turn one, which puts a team up, and then you can play this on turn two. But again, as I explained before, Sunflower is not a good card. Uh, Primal Sunflower does not go into Mix Nuts. I have tried using this as a tempo card. The Nuts Synergy doesn't really give you anything, anything useful. Uh, you can combine this with, let's say, Lil Buddy, but like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I should make a Lil Buddy Mix nut, nut, Nuts deck. Who knows? There's only a limited amount of Lil Buddies, and there's going to be better uses for Lil Buddy than combining it with the 3 cost 4 4. Um, I really don't think this is a great card, maybe for budget players. I'm just going to stick this in D. I, I, I might be undervaluing this in D. It really might be that with little, with some weird deck, if I dedicated it more to Mix Nuts, maybe this would be better. I'm gonna actually write down maybe in my in my deck list right now um, to try to make a deck with forget me nuts, uh, not forget me nuts with mixed nuts, but um, little buddy mixed nuts. But I I, I just I, I just I've tried this so many times and on the top level of the game it just doesn't really seem to be a good card, even though it might be okay for budget players. All right. Uh, keep it going. Here's Solar Winds. This used to be such an amazing card when it cost two. Again, plant environments that cost three or more are typically very bad uh, because it can be covered by zombie environment. And I have no idea why there's no one cost plant environments, but there are one cost zombie environments. It doesn't make sense because zombies have last say. When you play Solar Winds, if they left over one brain, they could use a black hole or an HG environment or a graveyard and cover this or trapper terror there's so many one cost environments and that's the reason why solar winds is a lot worse than it used to be when it cost two when it cost two it was actually overpowered so i don't mind the nerf this still is a decent environment i'm not gonna say this is bad you don't really need this in ramp decks anymore um it, it is a huge liability if you're running solar winds you're typically only running three you could go solar winds on three briar rose on turn four which is fine i mean it's a strong combo it used to be solar winds this used to be broken because you used to play solar winds on two and Briar Rose used to cost four, so you play this on turn three, and then the game just ended. That was just it. There's no way to come back from that, basically. Uh, there's Hot Lava, too. Cover this. Covers this. So many efficient ways. No, not Lava. Lava's... Oh, Lava's the plant environment. Great. But Lava, again, is not a good... People are saying there's a one plant environment that costs one. It's Lava. That's not a good card. <laughs> I mean, that's Lava. It's such a lie. If Lava... Just compare Lava to Trapper Territory. Why would... Trapper Territory, which only damages the opponents, be a zombie card, and Lava is a plant environment, it doesn't make any sense, that's a lie, it should be the other way around, Trapper Territory should damage your own cards, and Lava should only damage the opponent, but anyway, um, uh, where do we put Solar Winds, it's not a bad card, I'm just gonna put it in B, this used to be S when it was two cost, as you see a little icon here, Let's keep it going. Here's Sunflower Seed. This is a card that went through a lot of changes. I believe this was like a three... First of all, this used to be a three cost three two. Eight months, keep it up, Fry. And thank you so much, Raids, with the eight months. Thank you so much for subscribing on Twitch and I think Patreon too. Really appreciate it, Raids. With the Raid. Sunflower Seed used to be a three cost three two, which made it a really good uh, control card. Decent aggro card too, because again, three for three. Plus again, when this is killed, when this is answered, it gives you ramp. So it's a really sticky, it's a very difficult card to remove uh, thoroughly. Then they turn this into a three cost, I think three one, which still was too good because, I don't know, it probably was because Briar Rose was too good. I think nowadays it's three cost three one, 
So it'd still be a great, this would be amazing at 300. The idea was is that if you can stick this in front of a zombie and do three damage to it, which is great on turn three, and then it makes a sunflower. I mean, that's, that's kind of all you need from a card. Now at 2-2, it is pretty weak. It's not a great card anymore. Because uh, again, it, you lose a lot of tempo the turn you play it. It's still not bad though. I wonder if it's going to be in B or C. It used to be A. This definitely used to be A. I wonder if we're going to put this in B or C. Uh, this is an okay. It's a flower too, so it combines with Briar Rose. This is not a horrible card. It gives you five sun the next turn when you play it, so it's a little bit of ramp. Um, it's either a low B or a high C. I would say it's definitely more. It's more usable than than some of these sunflowers and stuff that we're running. Why did Why did I put regular sunflower? I put this in C. Uh, why is this here? I'm putting regular sunflower in D. I don't know. Did I did I do that by accident? Regular sunflower is not as useful as twin. It's not as useful as any of these. So regular sunflower goes in D. Pro this solar winds and uh, solar winds and sunflower seed. It is better than the C cost cards. I don't know. Not by much though. I'm probably gonna put this in C. I I don't think it's really that good. All right, here is a hot piece of trash garbage. First of all, completely outclassed in every way by Twin Sunflower. Twin Sunflower is a two cost card that does the exact same thing, except better because again, it, it, instead of having two health, this is three. The three health does not justify this costing one more. Uh, this is also not a flower. <laughs> this is so bad. I don't even know why they added this to the game. They added this late. Uh, I, I'm just gonna put this in F tier. It, it's, it's just not a good card. Should never ever be running Sunny or Shroom in a deck. If you're gonna do anything, if you're gonna go Mushroom, at least go Sun Shroom. Sunny or Shroom is horrible, horrible. Get that stuff out of here. Here's Venus Flytrap. Guys, stop running Venus Flytrap. This is so bad. Guys, this is a three cost two two. This is not good for heal decks. Plus, if this was a three cost two two and it would heal you for two when played, it would still, by the way, that would be a bad card. That would still be way better. Venus Flytrap Plant just dies usually when you play it to a Bungie Plumber Rolling Stone. It's not even necessarily gonna get that heal going. I just compare this to like ketchup mechanics. <laughs> so bad. This is, guys, stop. Even the budget players, budget heal decks, do not, you know what? I'm putting this in freaking Please delete here. Save our souls from this card. This is so... No one should ever run a 3 cost 2-2 two, two that sometimes heals in a deck. Are you kidding me? Here's Hammer. Or Wacko Zombie. This is, of course, based on the original Wacko Zombie Whack-A-Mole version of the original PVZ. Uh, this is fine. You don't end up running this in a lot of decks. I use this less often than it is good. Again, this can answer very more expensive cards like a kitchen sink that's fronted by a minion or a cowboy or a king or a stomp. It. There's a lot of cards that cost more than three uh, that this will answer. But besides for the fact, really, this will counter almost every three drop zombie uh, base unless it's a gravestone. Um, basically, this will counter it. Of course, there's a couple of exceptions. It's just a solid card. This does answer the amphibious lane. So even using this on a two-cost Toxic Waste Imp is very often a, a, a good card. Uh, I'm certainly not going to give this A because it's outclassed by a lot of other control cards in this game that are much more solid on the three slot. Um, I'll give this... I'll give this a solid B. I think it's probably... It's probably actually more useful than Ice Spore. It's definitely more useful than Solar Winds. Uh, it, this won't be... I don't end up using this tons but it is a good card all right here's blue Morang. this is a severely underrated card now this looks like it has very poor stats four cost three three is very bad stats but again flower synergy okay adds a little bit for bry rose the main thing is that this does three three damage strike through in the late game is very very good that's a solid amount of strike through damage to do three is so much better than two uh, in the budget version of Agro Solar Flare, you should definitely be running for Bloomerangs. This is just a good finisher. Again, if you're running Aggro and you're running your Haunted Pumpkins and you're really high hitting cards, eventually your opponent starts clogging a bunch of lanes. So the fact that you can do th put up with four costs, three, three, it does three damage to face. It'll destroy your opponent's minion or at least damage it severely and make it answerable. Uh, when your opponent finally does stick a minion in front of this, but usually by that time, this will do have done six damage. Uh, this is a this is actually a very solid card. It's extremely underrated. I would probably give this a B. 
uh, I'll give this a solid B. On the highest le- on for budget players, this is an A. Um, for Agar Solar Flare, I- I'm just gonna give Boomerang a solid B. They're really, really under undervalued, undervalued card. Solid B card. All right. Oh man, guys, <laughs> this is whack a zombie, but it's just it's just this is just this call should be called ass a zombie. This is such a bad card, and I'm so mad because Chomper was the most fun plant in the original PVZ. Why did they make this into such a garbage? By the way, this used to be like a 2-1, and they made it like, oh, here, we're going to buff this to 2-2. This should at least be a 3-3. The reason why Wackazombie is better than Chomper is because Wackazombie can remove cards if you have a plant there. This needs there to be a empty of oh, zombie in an empty lane to work plus it doesn't work on the amphibious lane like if this was a team up maybe this would be good because then it could work it still won't work this is a team up maybe and amphibious this would actually be decent because then you could use this not only to remove a zombie to also protect one of your cars it'll also be very uh representative of how it actually used to be used in the original plant for zombies i'm so mad because this is my favorite this is just my favorite plant and they screw it's too exp- it's four costs too like, this is just to make it as good as Wackazombie, you'd have to make it team up. Why would this cost four? Why is this a super rare? Oh my gosh. Please save our souls from Chomper. This is so freaking bad. Oh. Why? Why would they ruin the the most, f- one of the most fun cards in the original Plants vs. Zombies just down the drain? Oh, snap, here's Elderberry. This is a great card. Every aggro deck, aggro solar flare or anything, has to have four copies of Elderberry. This is a four cost five four. And again, it does have the, you don't usually want to play as dry. Sometimes playing it dry is fine if you need an extra two damage strike through. It's okay, so it's not bad, but you're almost always evolving this. Uh, great combos in aggro solar flare. You always want to like put this on a minion. That does a lot of damage on turn three, but then it will get fronted. So when it gets fronted, you put this guy who has four health uh, which will usually then not die to whatever they front with and does another five damage strike through plus clears that lane Plus it'll do five damage next turn. It'll remain a threat on the field uh, One of the best combos in Agro Solar Flare of course is to uh, combine it with this card over here the Poison Ivy Because again you stick this on an empty lane It does five damage that turn then they front it. So now Poison Ivy's bad BAM you answer with Poison Ivy which again usually their zombie they're putting in front of this is not gonna have four attack even if it does a five four it's a 5-4, does 5 damage to their face, clears a, a huge 4 health zombie, a 4 attack zombie, I mean, off the field. Just incredible value. This is easy, easily going in A. Uh, this is really one of the one of the better aggro cards in the game. Again, I'm not going to put it quite in S. Very, very, I could almost put this in S. A very, very solid card. Why not S? I'm not going to put it in S because it's, it's... It's not as good. It's not as useful as Little Buddy. It doesn't appear in as many decks. It's really mostly good just for aggro. Um, it is a liability unless you're running the exact right deck, and it also is not as important as the Haunted Pumpkin. I'll, I'll give this A+. I'm not going to put it in S, though. All right. Here's Heart of Choke. This is the heart and soul <laughs> of the heal, heal decks, pun intended. Um, this, of course, the big combo is to put this into, as I explained before, into a Venus Flytrap planet, and then, uh, this will do damage every time you heal, and the Venus Flytrap planet will say, hey, something in here did damage, so I'm gonna heal again, and it'll do a cycle until your opponent blocks. Uh, this is a solid card, you don't even need to do it with Venus Flytrap planet, you can also just use this with your general heals, like your catch-up mechanics. Uh, this is a very, very good combo with Astro Vera, because Astro Vera will heal your face for 10, uh, and also then this will do damage your face for 10, so it could be used as a potential finisher. This is a great card. This is definitely a part of every heal deck. Uh, I'm just going to give this a solid A. Amazing. Let's keep it going. Here's Lawnmower. Uh, I'm, I, I, I don't like Lawnmower, because again, if you are going to be playing, the problem is like this. If you are playing Control, which is really Lawnmower, it's a removal card. You need your removal cards to be reliable and the fact this does not answer the heights lane and does not answer the amphibious lane it really is limited in that way it really makes this sometimes a very very bad card um again it's not horrible it's decent value it's completely outclassed let's say by squash because again one more cost uh to be able to squash a minion in any lane it, it is worth it that versatility than having to be lawnmower and it having to be the ground lane um, two more lanes for one more cost. I, I really think that that's better. Um, 
again, sometimes it's just dead. Sometimes it's just a dead car that really just does not do enough. It also is outclassed, you know, it's outvalued by Shamrocket, which anyway should be destroyed. I think that this, if if the other removal cards were more expensive, I'm going to explain, like, Shamrocket should cost five and Squash should cost six. I think then one more would be viable. Uh, I think Wacka Zombie is usually a better inclusion. This really doesn't make into a lot of decks. For that reason, I'm putting this in D tier. I really don't think it's actual and again it's a good value card but again zombies also they're not going to be sticking a big zombie especially since tactical cuke exists which is actually a better card than lawnmower uh that also just affects the ground lanes but typically big zombies the priority is not going to be to play them on the ground you're either going to be playing them in the amphibious lane if they can like deep sea guard or on the heights lane uh your big minions and uh it, it just makes lawnmower way too circumstantial all right keep it going we got metal petal sunflower this is <sighs> I used to use this more in ramp decks. It's a nice budget sort of rampy card. It really doesn't do enough for its cost though. Three cost, three four, so it's bad stats. And then it gives you one extra sun. This is answerable by a lot of plays on turn four. Not the easiest card to answer. It's not bad, but it just it just doesn't do enough. Like where does this go? So now on turn five, you can place. You lost so much tempo on your turn four play, and you're going to be able to make it up next turn by playing a five instead of a six. It, it, this isn't. It's just one of these mess solar cards. I'm just going to put this in C. I think for budget players, it's probably around C, and then for more advanced players, it would be closer to D. But uh, because, again, it's not bad. I just, <laughs> it's usually, it's just such better. Just look at the fours in the solar class. Look at this. <laughs> it's just so, it's so outclassed by wing. Yeah, screw it. I'm putting it in D. Just because of how severely outclassed it is, particularly by wingnut. I think in, in for budget players, this would be a C, but on the highest level of game, it's a D. All right, here's Sunstrike. Sunstrike, of course, this is a very expensive card for what it does. It gives all your guys strike through. So every once in a while, Sunstrike is amazing. It just makes you win all in one turn. But again, that is only if you have established a lot of very strong plans on the field. And even just one really doesn't make Sunstrike worth it, typically, unless it's an extremely huge plan. When you play Sunstrike, that huge plant can get removed, or you might get field cleared. It's really not reliable. The fact that Conjure's a trick, again, if this would draw a card, it would be way better than Conjuring Random Trick, because unfortunately, this just half the time gives you crap uh, cards like Water Balloons and just, I don't know, another Sunstrike that you don't need. It really is very, it'll give you like, like uh, I don't know, Espresso Fiesta, which you're never going to use. Uh, this is very, very outvalued, in my opinion. By the almighty plant food plant food if you have that big minion on the field plant food does the effect it gets that value immediately uh sunstrike gives your opponent an opportunity uh to answer so again this is useful in some decks uh, in otk we did otk pecanolith is very good if you have like these big even like the big dr peppers and sunstrike again on the highest level of the game sometimes it's amazing but it's very unreliable um I'm, I'm going to, probably you guys are going to be mad. Where would I put that? I mean, I could, it's better than the cards in C. It's more useful than, than freaking, all right, I'll put it a low B. I think it's really about the same as Solar Winds and, and Ice Form. But yeah, that, I can't put this lower than B, but okay, we'll put it in B. It's, it's not a bad card, it's not a bad card, but it's not a great card either. All right, here is Venus Flytrap Planet. Uh, one of the heart and soul cards of the of any heal deck. Uh, you're basically always going to be using this together with Heart of Choke, as I explained many times. Not going to explain this card because I've already explained it a lot. Uh, but even without Heart of Choke, other cards in this that are going to be healing your face. Good way of um, good way of sustaining on the field. The problem, of course, is that it's a four cost. It's a four cost environment, and four cost environments. You have to be very careful in playing this because again, it can be answered by a one. I feel like this card would be so much better if there weren't one cost environments on the zombie side. Because then, unless they unless they save over two brains, this will always be a safe bet. Some heroes don't have one cost environments though. Um, turn four is usually a time that they're going to be playing like a tempo zombie, so Venus Flytrap Planet very often becomes viable. I'll just give this a solid. Ugh, where do I put this? It's either low, it's either low A or high B. I'll put it a solid B. Oh, here's Wingnut. This is a great card. Uh, first of all, this has ridiculous stats. It's a four cost three seven. So the only two cards that officially remove this are Exploding Fruitcake, which by the way is overpowered, and like uh, you know 
Fleck. Uh, which again, it isn't even a great answer because it only costs one less on the on the plant side. Of course, I'm talking about uh, Hand of Devastation, whatever that card is called. Wingnut, besides for having amazing stats, this counters some of the best zombie strategies in the game. Zombies rely on bonus attacks to win. Whether it be Trickster, it could be Valk, it could be Frenzy Minions, like Frenzy, like Going Viral is a very good card, and this really counters frenzied attacks again a frenzy if it kills a minion it'll do another attack this will prevent that from happening i usually want to play this on the right side of the field and put team ups in front of it in order to protect it that will really prevent entire like waves of damage from zombies from coming in it's just a ridiculously good card there's never a solar deck that wingnut is a bad idea there might be some that there's going to be better cards you're not going to run wingnut as much but even in like aggro solar flare you can run wingnut just to counter trickster decks um, again, there is Exploding Fruka. This is the reason, one of the reasons why you need just Exploding Fruka in every deck. It's such a play around card. Um, I'm going to put this in S tier because of just how amazingly useful uh, this is and how very difficult it is to answer. There's only a few cards that really efficiently remove that uh, on the plant side. So I, I could put this in high A. I'm going to stick that in S. All right, here we go. We got Allosaurus. We have 630 people here on, on Twitch. Amazing. Thank you all for joining us. All right, Allosaurus. This is very expensive for its cost. It's a 5 cost, 4 7. So that's not great stats just compared to Wingna. Um, the heal is good. So if you can have a bunch of damage guys on the field, have Allosaurus plus also have Pepper MD. It still won't even heal the pe it still won't even grow the pepper MD. Sometimes this will make like a 10-10 pepper MD, but you also have to have a way of activating the Dino War. So if you just play your Pepper MD and your Allosaurus together, it's not necessarily gonna work. Uh, this does heal you for a little bit. It's sustained. I don't use this as much as a control card as I can, because I think as a control card, this can remove a minion off the field or at least block something. It's constantly healing itself, so it's a very difficult card to take out. If you're ever drawing cards, this will keep going. I don't even use this necessarily in heal decks, because heal decks, you want larger chunks of heals uh, to combine with your uh, with your damaging heart chokes. But again, it is a decent card. It's just a fine, it's just a fine card. I I'm going to put this as a solid B. Don't think this is quite an A, because again, for its expensive cost, I feel like this card, there could be a version of this that costs four. That would be much more worth it. Because again, if you have five, five cost plus you have to draw a card in order to activate its ability. You know. Anyway, plus it dies to rocket science. It's pretty easy to remove as a five cost card, but it wouldn't be so much as a four. I think you'd have to lower its stats to like a three six or something. But anyway, it, it's a solid card. Just give it a nice solid B. All right. Keep it going. Here's Astrocado. This is actually one of the best cards in the game. I way underuse this card. You usually just want to stick this on the field. There's this cool idea with Chompzilla that people used to do, or I should probably bring that deck back, where you try to play this and try to double its attack uh, using cards like uh, Grape Grape Power. Uh, then it'll make it do 10. But really, this is just a solid... It do, it's like, you know, unlike Elderberry, this does not need to evolve from a card. Um, and really, even if it didn't have this ability, just a 5-3 strike through would be good enough. When destroyed, this gains Astrocado Pit. So this will give you a 1-1, one, one, a 0-1 a in your hand. Um, the Astrocado Pit will then transform into Astrocado. So it makes your opponent have to play around that little pit that you're going to stick on the field as a plant, by the way, which means they're going to have to save over. So it's going to limit their tempo. Uh, and they're always going to have to save a brain in order to answer the Astrocado Pit, which you don't even have to play. You can just cost them, that'll just cost them an extra brain every single turn. Uh, I really think this is one of the best cards in the game. I'm going to put this in S tier. Uh, it's obviously a very, very good uh, finisher in Agro Solar Flare, because again, it's 5 damage strike through. Just ridiculous, ridiculous value. Uh, I'm sticking that in S. All right. What are we going to do about Briar Rose? This, of course, is a card that has gone through a lot of changes. Originally, this cost 6. Uh, as you can actually see, the icon over here is still, the again, the old, old icon. It says 6 cost. At 6, it was underpowered. We used to run it a little bit of ramp to Briar Rose and run some flowers, some power flowers. It wasn't really a good card. Then, instead of turning this into a 5 cost, they went all the way down to 4, and then this was broken. How could you have a remove? First, just one for one removal at 4. Just stick this in front of any zombie, and the zombie dies. It's just way too good. Especially the fact that you can combine this with team ups and other flowers. This was just ridiculously easily the best card in the game, <laughs> basically at, at four. Definitely best plant in the game. Now that we go to five, this is a balanced card. I don't think this is bad. This is still very, very solid. I, I don't know if I'm going to put this in S or an A because I, every time that I 
I always think, well, it's a little late, and maybe on the five cost cards I should be running more finishers, but every time I actually end up putting this in a deck, it just carries so many games. There's so many good matchups against sports decks, against pirates, against this just can kill so efficiently, especially because Lil Buddy combines in order to kill any zombie. It, it just it just combines with everything in the game to do well. It, it, even again, just as a five cost card to stick this in front of a problematic zombie and the zombie will not be able to bonus attack their way through this or else it'll die. Uh, not an easy card to remove. Also, 3-4 is actually very good stats. Again, this is really perfect stats to make it difficult to remove. Doesn't die to Shamrocket uh, or uh, to Rocket Science. You'll need either a Hand of Devastation, an Exploding Fruitcake, but, you know, Exploding Fruitcake answers everything. Uh, I, I think I'm actually still going to stick this in S tier because I, I really think that even though it used to be broken, broken, now it's actually just a super good card. It's never really bad to ever run Briar Rose in a deck. And I'll, I'll keep good old Briar Rose, my one true love. We'll, we'll keep that in S tier. All right, here's Power Flower. This is, a, again, a really, really good card. Very much like Bloom Ring, I feel like this is undervalued. Agro Solar Flare, this is a great finisher. Three damage strike through uh, is the key. And the fact that it has five health, which makes it, again, a very difficult card to remove for less than five brains, uh, does make this worth it. The little bit of heal does help. Um, especially if you have other flowers like your bloomerings, like the little buddies, your briar roses, this is fine. You don't end up using this uh, for... This is completely outclassed, to be honest, though, by Astrocado on the highest level of the game. So, for for advanced players on the top level of the game, you're never ever going to see Power Flower ever used. For budget players, though, who you don't have your Astrocado, so rare, so a great, great inclusion. Um, because um, for budget players, I would definitely give this an A, but because it is outclassed on the highest level again by Astricado, and again, it is a pretty expensive card for what it does, uh, I'm just going to give this a solid B. And uh, we are going to move right along. We're going to move right along to Squash. All right, so again, in my right now, Squash is not a good card. In my opinion, Squash it costs six. I think being able to answer any dry zombie for five, this is actually an overpowered card that makes the game less fun. As I explained in the Shamrocket rant and in the Guardian class, Shamrocket should cost five, Squash should cost six, and then some of the other removal cards like Doomshim should cost seven. Um, Again, if you're trying to answer cards on previous turns, this is not good for five. But if you're going to be answering anything they play on turn five, six, seven... Again, I'm not saying this card is overpowered. What I'm saying is it makes the game less fun. Um, I already went on this in length in the Guardian class or in the Sh Why Shamrocket is a, is a dumb card rant. You can look that up on YouTube. Um, I think this is good for budget players. You basically never see this on the highest level of the game because it's so outvalued by so many other control cards, including Briar Rose. Just compare this to Briar Rose. Briar Rose will usually do whatever Squash does. Of course, you know, Briar Rose can, can even remove, if you have a plant in a lane and they stick a problematic zombie in that lane, Briar Rose plus a team up will be able to remove that like little buddy. So I'm not even going to say that it's better than Briar Rose in that way. It answers the amphibious lane. It's not a bad card. It's also not a good one. I, I would say for budget players, this would be on a higher level, but for in the higher level of the game, it's better than Lawnmower. It's better than these Ds. It, 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 it'll it it'll just fit solidly in C. It's about as useful as, as everything else here. You can use this as a removal card. Really, in the highest level of the game, though, you never see Squash. You never, ever, ever see Squash. Maybe this would even be in D. I'll put it in C just for budget players. Keep it going. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm having a really hard time with Cobb Cannon. If I, am I going to put this in S or an A? This is one of the best cards in the whole game. This used to be so much more useful. Used to be so much more useful when Ramp was better. It's not, Ramp isn't that good. Again, it used to be like Solar Winds was a good card. So you just end up with all these extra Sunflowers. You'd be getting to turn... You'd be getting to turn six quicker. Plus, you just these cards would just be team ups. You just have team ups galore. Again, back when Sunflower Seed was a better card, this would just create that extra Sunflower team up on the field. Again, in order to activate its ability, even as a six cost six six plant with just its base ability without the team up evolution, just removes one one and you know does a little mini field clear. This is still a very decent card like that. With the team up evolution, that this will just destroy any zombie. I mean, it makes it such a good control card. Usually, you're going to see Briar Rose on five, Cobb Cannon on six. Very common combo because, again, they work together with similar cards like Little Buddy, like Sunflowers. 
Um, this is either a very high A or low S. I, I See, the problem is I don't know where I'm going to end up putting three-headed chomper because nowadays in the meta, if you're running a ramp deck with sunflowers, Cobb Cannon is the better option. If it's not a ramp deck, uh, three-headed chomper is actually now just as good. It, it, it's almost just as good. So am I going to put three-headed chomper in S tier also? Um, <laughs> this is a really, really tough one. I think that the fact that the Cobb Cannon, though, the reason that in overall it probably is still better than, than Three Headed Chomper, Cobb Cannon does its removal immediately. The field clear of 1 1 plus destroying the zombie happens right when you play it. Three Headed Chomper, which again has the same stats and cost, you need this to survive on the field. And if they end up having a Deadly Barrel or a Sham or a Rocket Science or any little card that will remove the Three Headed Chomper, then it's just a 6 cost 6 6, which is not a good card. Uh, and again, especially if they use a rocket science on this, this is very, very bad value. It doesn't do anything immediately. I suppose if they rocket science the Cobb Cannon, at least this has already done something besides for absorbing that rocket science. And for that reason, I'm actually going to stick the Cobb Cannon in S, and I'm actually going to just go in the liberty of taking Threaded Chopper and putting it right in A. I think it is a solid uh, sort of late game card. It looks like you're just going to hear little sounds because the uh, Twitch is lagging. I'll <laughs> get them back as soon as possible. I'm just going to continue this tier list for the YouTube video. Um, and... Alright. Maybe I'll put this in as a break and I'll just fix the Twitch chat. I'll, I'll just edit this part out. <laughs> There we go. Sorry about that. Looks like my OBS just glitched out. <sighs> it's nothing to do with my Wi-Fi. It's just the streaming software decided not to. Like, the YouTube stream has been on this whole time. All right. Uh, so as I was saying, I'm going to put Cobb Cannon in S tier, and then the Three to Chomper, which again does not get its value immediately when played. It relies on staying on the field. Uh, I'm going to put this in A tier. It still is a very solid control card. You can sometimes get so much value out of Three to Chomper. Of course, you just got to be careful with Three to Chomper to always play it uh, when they're not going to have an easy answer. So if they have that two two or three left over for Fruitcake or Rocket Science, you got to be very careful playing Three to Chomper. But again, very, very solid control card. Uh, and can get a lot of value, can answer the amphibious, big amphibious minions, etc. Uh, besides for being a 6 cost 6 6, which again for a plant is is very decent stats. Um, Alright, so we did that. Of course you can see in the little icon that 3 to Chomper used to have 5 health, they buffed it. It's okay. And I, I, I like the buff. I think at 6 6 it's not overpowered. It's just a nice solid control card, like game. 3 to Chomper, cool. Alright. Uh, moving right along to Laser Bean. This is too expensive. It just, I mean, first of all, just compared to Astrakado. Astrakado, uh, this of course has four more health, but it, for one cost more and having four more health is not worth it. Uh, plus, again, this does make the, the Astrakado pit, which theoretically is better than having four more health. It still dies to Rocket Science. And to, the, the, the removal cards, again, the three damage removal card, unless they're running Wrath in their deck, usually... It's worth it to anyway run a rocket science or a fruitcake to answer your astrocado. Laser Bean is just not good. I did try recently like a Laser Bean Pecanolith deck. I'll probably put that on YouTube, but it wasn't worth it. It really, this is just too expensive for what it does. I really think Power Flower is the better card than Laser Bean. Uh, and for that reason, I'm, I'm just going to put this in. It's not horrible. You can use this as a finisher. It's fine if they can't answer it. It does a ton of damage. It used to be a 4-6. They turned into a 5-7. They buffed it, but it, it's just too expensive for what it does. Uh, and that's why I'm putting in C. And it's outclassed by many cards in its class. So, especially if you compare this to other six drops like Threaded Chomper or Cop Cannon, like, what are you doing running Laser Bean in your deck typically at six? Uh, and that's why I'm putting it in. Putting it in C tier. 
Here is a nice, solid F-tier card. This is one of the basic commons. Uh, again, you can use this as finishers only in the very beginning of the game, like right when you start doing your aggro solar flare, you can include some smashing pumpkins. The problem is, is that first of all, it says horrible stats, six cost six five. Second of all, it's outclassed by every six drop, literally in the entire game, including the two in its class three to Chomper and Cow Cannon. Um, you can just stick like a one cost like minion in front of this and then it doesn't do any damage like this has to at least have strike through <laughs> maybe a six cost six five strike through that would be fine but smashing pumpkin uh it's going in f tier it's really even for budget even for budget players this is not even close to as good as cards as finishers like bloomerang and power flower which not only are strike through but also cheaper uh, again, it's just ants. It's for six. It doesn't do anything besides for a big chunk of stats, and it gets removed. Even Locust Sword, which is not a good card, removes this efficiently. So, um, we are actually close to done with this already. The solar solar one went quickly. All right, here's Cuke. Another very very difficult card to rate. This is an extremely strong control card because uh, it can remove many plants hard off the ground. Of course, the limitation is the fact that it only works on the ground, does not affect the Amphibious or Heights lane, uh, which definitely makes it limited. I, I don't, this, the, uh, of course, the other liability is the fact it costs six, so it's very expensive for a removal card. Um, usually, Squash would probably be better than Tactical Cuke, typically. Plus, this also answers your own minion. It's not like you can have a guy on the field and then remove the card in front of it using Tactical Cuke, because this will destroy your own plants in the ground so again in a weird like super late game control deck where you just ramp you know trying to get to like past six like what are you going to you're going to walnut bowling you're going to cornucopia like this is really not a great card i'm gonna put it basically in the same level as like squash and laser bean and give this a, a c again every once in a while it's amazing every once in a while this is a game winning card it just does so much it removes so much value for six but it's not really worth it. it's not i want to almost put this in d i'll put this in low c all right, three to Chomper we already did, and we're going to move right along to Toadstool. This is such like a, a a bunch of like a grab bag, a bunch of mixed meh. For a six cost card, this does not do enough. I feel like this could even just cost like four or five, and I don't even know how great it would be at four. But maybe at five, this would be balanced. So this is, first of all, six cost four or four, so it's just a little bit of stats, not great. And then it destroys a zombie here with four or less, which again, sometimes is good. But it's not going to protect, if that zombie, if there's a plant in that lane already, it's not going to destroy it. So that's the problem with all those other removal cards. Plus, it has to be four or less. Like, when you're coming to turn six, you're typically going to need to be removed. If you refer a control card to be reliable at six, you're going to have to remove bigger zombies. So it's usually completely outclassed by any other control cards. But it gives you a minion. It also gives extra sun every turn. So, But like, what are you going to do on turn seven? You're going to play... Astro Vera, I guess that's a cool combo. It's just a big mixed mixed bunch of men. It's very expensive. I feel like at five, this could really work. I'm just gonna put this in C with everything else, just because the amount of total decks this actually ends up being good in uh, is not very much. All right, here's Astro Vera. Astro Vera is, this is such an expensive card at eight for what it does, but it ends up being very, very useful. Uh, this can sometimes just save games. Giving 10 health, that is half of your health, is add, just added a chunk. Even if this would heal you for 10, it would be good. This will add your maximum health to 30 now. So even if you have 20 health, this will just make your health pool a lot bigger. Uh, this does become viable because, again, hard to choke. If you have that on the field, this will not only heal you for 10, it'll do 10 damage to your opponent's face. This can be used in, a, like, control decks. This is a very good, if you want to just troll your opponent to make the game go really, really long, <laughs> this is fine. The, the problem with Astro Vera as a card is that if you're not using it together with Heart Choke as a finisher, there's not a lot of good cards that come after it. It's basically just Walnut Bolt, like Astro Vera. Like, why are you trying to gain health on eight instead of running a card that wins you the game? Because you're stalling for turn nine Walnut Bowling. That's not a bad strategy. Um, the other eight cost card, let's say, in, in the plants is Astro Vera. The other one is like Dark Matter Dragon Fruit, which again, making a deck that finishes with this. Dark Matter Dragon Fruit wins you the game. The Heart of Choke, it's not the Heart of Choke, the Astro Vera, it just stalls. It's still a good card. <laughs> um... I, 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 I don't know, I mean, this will, uh, it gives you such an advantage. If you have strike throughs and you're just battling, you know, blow for blow and each of you are getting damage, this puts you so far ahead 
in mean, that fight. This is so game saving sometimes. I, I, I'm kind of split. Should I put this in B or in A? I think I'll put this in A. I think because, again, as a finisher in heal decks, and in general, it's just a good card. In general, it's just fine. It's never like, if you're running any late game deck, it's never bad to have it. I'll just put it uh, probably lower end A. I don't think this is as good as Heart of Choke or as Elderberry or as Catch Mechanic. Really, all of these cards. This is probably the least good of the A's, but it's it's still better than the things we're running in B. I think on the highest level of the game. It's a viable card. You run in a lot of decks. Uh, I'll just stick it in A. All right. And we have one last card over here, Cornucopia. This is one of the most overrated cards. <laughs> this is, guys, this is not good. First of all, at 10 cost, this is way too expensive. I would even argue at nine, this would still be too expensive. I really think Cornucopia could be an eight cost card and actually then be balanced. Just like, you know, Dark Matter Dragon Fruit. Compare this to Dark Matter Dragon Fruit. Dark Matter Dragon Fruit's ability is better. This make a random plan in each lane. Back in set one, this was a decent ability, but as they've added Galactic Guardians, Colossal, and Triassic, the amount of zero and one and two cost cards has just been so disproportionate. Again, just look at the Solar Class alone. The um, zero to, let's say, three cost cards go to here, and then from three to 10 go to here. So more than half the cards in the game cost between zero and three. Um, they're mo mostly you're just getting a bunch of one and two drops and there's even a whole bunch of like four drops They're just like garbage just garbage unreliable every once in a while You'll get a great zucchini from this or dark matter dragon fruit or some just amazing every once in a while Cornucopia will give you a lot competitively though There's really no business ever running this as a finisher now I'm gonna give it some extra points for being a very fun card. I think it is I think it is a fun card. It's sort of cool, but competitively, this is just too expensive. I really think at eight, this would be balanced. Think about it. Think compared to Plankwalker. Plankwalker at least gives you pirates, which are decent. <laughs> this would give you six six. Doesn't have strike through. Like playing Plankwalker would still be the better card uh, if you want to compare a plant to a zombie, which is anyway not fair. This is not a, competitively. I would I would probably give this a D because it's a fun card. But it is overrated. I I'm just going to stick this in C tier because really at the end of the day, you have very, very little, very little business running this uh, in any deck. It's kind of cute to play like Great Zucchini and then use Molecule to create a Konocopia, but it's it's more useful than the D cards. It's an okay finisher. It's not horrible. You can win with Cornucopia because again, it gives you a lot of stats, puts a lot of minions on the field. It's just super unreliable when putting it in C. Alright guys, so that is the tier list. Did I end up knocking off because I did that lane? Um, I guess I ended up knocking off the... Uh, do not want the trash is off the bottom of the tier list? That's fine, we'll just leave them there. That's exactly where they belong. Freaking chomper and <laughs> water balloons. <laughs> anyway guys, that was the solar tier list. As usual, let me know in the comment section below what tier list, which class you would like to see me do next. And I do have some special ideas for you. Really like the way this turned out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace, this is Fry.